I'm a new naive councillor apparently. But I'm, not, I'm not as green as I'm ever talking perhaps. Um, I, we, we talk about process and fair play and we were given the reassurances as councillors that our land trust since the June decision had nothing to do with any of these proposals. Absolutely nothing. We were told that um, no way, shape or form and there's a repugnant stench of dishonesty sitting next to me. This information, this information, this information, order! Thank you. When you call for a point of order, you are supposed to shut up, and that is why you cannot subvert and point of order. Point of order, that is stupid. Point of order, and that sort of behaviour and language on this council is unacceptable. And it should be withdrawn. Otherwise, we will get into a slanging match, and I'm quite happy to do so. But that is, in our code of conduct, that sort of behaviour and language in this council is not acceptable, and I would want it to be withdrawn. Councillor Christie, I take your point. Councillor Bell, members must not be disrespectful. No member of the local authority, this is 3.3.10, no member of the local authority at any meeting may be disrespectful in speech or use offensive or malicious language, including in reference to the local authority or any other member or any officer or employee of the local authority. In addition, no member may impute improper motives or make offensive remarks about the private affairs of any other member of the local authority or its staff. Take I think an apology is normal. I apologise and withdraw. Can I carry on? Because in this code of conduct, there's also something about honesty and integrity. And this information here from the Department of Internal Affairs clearly documents a number of correspondences between the current chair and the ex chair of the WAM Trust working since the June decision Councilor right through until the 14th. And so, we have no honesty on period. Councillor Bell. We were told... Councillor Bell. Would you please speak to the notice of motion? I am. Yes. We were told that the WAN Trust had absolutely nothing to do with this. We were told by the current chair and the past chair. And they have been all over this. It has not been a level playing field. It has not been a fair process. Our council staff have been sending emails to the Internal Affairs Department. So all of this came out of an OIA request because I can't, as a councillor, get information out of the council staff. Okay? I almost want to move a procedural motion. But I can't, I don't need to vote. But until this council sorts out its mess, until this council is open and honest with each other, council laws are open and honest with each other, until we don't have all the backroom planning and sniving and we start working as a council, we're going nowhere. And I don't think the public is going to accept this council's behaviour as it is rolled out. This process has been flawed from the start. Okay, until we actually start acting like grown-ups, we're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> cannot accept this notice of motion. No way or shape or form can I accept this notice of motion. In good faith, in good faith, Councillor Bell, when you brought this notice of motion, I asked you face to face, could the Hungavasa project came for, come forward? And you clearly said yes. You clearly said yes. 
And as time evolved, obviously it came in as one of the proposals. It was also asked of the chair of the 2020, and he too said yes. And so in a fair process, the metrics went out to the public, they had six weeks in which to respond, and 21 submissions came in. And the, the, at the time, the chair of the 2020 wanted to maintain, we had to follow the matrix, we had to do it properly, we had to follow process. We followed process. We followed process and got to a point. And the point was that we had four preferred options based around the matrix. And then, all of a sudden, let me tell you the story, the background. We're at a strategic planning meeting, and we have got one of, the, one of our leading councillors running around with a notice of motion to wipe this. Running around while we're trying to build a team. And I had knowledge of that. And then, no, no, no correspondence with our worship, the Mayor, placed on your table by, and we have on, the, on, on this notice of motion, senior councillors who have senior roles. Shame on you. You didn't have the courage to go to your Mayor and tell her this is what you were going to do. So here we are today. I agree. I feel we are all fed up with this. We want to get to an outcome. We have to stand up and be bold and be counted. And around that, we have to take on board the information that is coming to us from the general public, and it's coming in droves. Absolute droves, and no one can deny that. And here we have, we talk about engaging our community. Yesterday, we had significant engagement policy. Engage your public. We had the public engaged in a process. They want to fund almost all of this project. They want to lead it. They want to use their own builders. They want to do everything that a council would want of their public. They want them to, we want people to lead projects. Here is a public-private partnership. Councillor Holsham. <laughs>
Shine on you.
Supply accounts with a list of proof. The Hunt Pass Agreement. I'm here, as we've been writing about, I have yet to see the Hunt Pass Agreement. I'm working with this Prosper Northern Trust member. Remember the 40 accounts that we make in future decisions. Don't something them off. So I'm quite astounded because in the in the I'll be challenged on figures. And this page it shows where the figures are on the Hunter Master. It adds up to 3.7 million and counts as we all know it's a lot more than that. And it's in the gym, they ask me, I'm just grabbing figures out of there, sitting here. Okay, to sum up. As 2020 chair of the development of I've led the development of the town roads, the Ark Trail, the walkway, the two bridges, the Luke Walkway, the Canopy Bridge, Gene, Gene Subcommittee to put in the mall, Five Finger Roundabout, and all those projects because we follow good process. This has been full from the chart start, and the only thing I've got to say now is do you think we're going to end up with this recommendation? This is only the start of the debate today. <coughs>
agree with you we need to deal with this issue today, but I don't believe this notice of motion is a way of doing that. I will be voting against it. I will now put the vote. Those in favour, say aye. The division has been called for. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillors Bell, Bretherton, Martin, Hulse and Cuthbert. Those against? Councillors Morgan, Deeming, Williamson, McLaughlin, Glenn, Herman, Christie, Innes and Her Worship the Mayor. Motion is lost. Item two, I would like to move the following motion. It's in uh, five parts. The motions are one, that council receives the report. Two, that council supports the building of the Hunabasa Wairau Maria Centre for a grant of $2.8 million to the Cross for Northern Trust. Wait, what Three, we, have we got a copy of this? That, uh, it will be distributed. Oh, okay. That council includes commitment to this project in the draft 2015-2025 long-term plan. And four, that staff be authorised to engage independent qualified professionals to assess harborside slash art maritime play or AMP proposals up to a maximum of $100,000 in total. Assessment to include construction costs, operating costs, and expected visitor numbers, with a view to exploring these as additional development projects for inclusion in the 2020 Inner City Revitalisation Plan. And five, the Council thanks all those people who submitted proposals. Do I have a second for those motions? Councillor Morgan, thank you. Councillor Morgan. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. In moving these motions, I am looking for a win-win. People have talked about the fact that they believe Pontefaster is right, but maybe it's not right in, in their place or, or in the right, um, the funding model is not right. I believe we can have an and-and. We have an opportunity. We went through a very robust process calling for ideas and proposals from our community. We received some fantastic ideas. I was thrilled, given the relatively short space of time, the amount of effort that went into some of those proposals, which is why the last motion says to thank those who submitted proposals. Some of those ideas are too good to lose. As Councillor Hulse pointed out, after going through the process and the matrix, we had two outstanding proposals. The Hundabasa Wairau Māori Art Centre was number one, followed very closely by Harborside. That shows that we've got two great opportunities in front of us. The Hundabasa Wairau Māori Art Centre can only build, be built at the, harbour build, at the old harbour building. <coughs> the old NRC building or the old um, Harbour building. The ideas and concepts that came through in the other pro proposals can be used in other areas. <coughs> the proposers themselves said, probably if we had the option, we'd prefer a new build. That option is available. We have the 2020 momentum vision of which we've achieved a tremendous amount. I do commend Councillor Hulse for his vision and leadership in the past for many of these proposals that have gone through. We have our fabulous award-winning Tomato Aapohi. We have the Hautia Loop. We have Kotui Tui Fitting Up. We have the Canopy Bridge. We've got, we're going to have pop-up retail around that Hautia Loop. It's just ready to go. The BMX track's built. We have a sculpture walk, an art trail. We have a wonderful marina. marina. The Waka and Way, a millennium project that many look um, at at the time saying, it was gracious. That's a long way from anywhere. We have the Family Art Museum, all in this one fantastic precinct. These are, were visionary things that were detailed in the 2020 Momentum project. The Hundabasa was included in that. We have followed a process. We are decision makers. Our, our process should be that we have an open mind. 
It concerns me when one councillor says I'm anti-contrasting. This is not an open mind. We should not be predetermining our decision. An open mind means that we are looking at the opportunities that are available in all of the proposals, which is what I have done. We've looked at a conflict of interest. We've given councillors the opportunity to check whether or not they believe they have a conflict of interest. I've asked all the councillors on numerous forum to tell me if, there's, if they believe they have one. The CEO has also spoken with some of you. There is no conflict of interest. We are here to represent our ratepayers. Of course we get involved and passionate about projects that we believe in. Nothing wrong with that. I encourage it. There's no pecuniary interest that I can see. Councillor Martin asked for us to clarify that right at the beginning, and none of us indicated that we had a conflict. And I'm comfortable with that, that that is the case. This is not an easy decision. We've come under tremendous pressure. There's been lobbying. There's been campaigning. Expectations have been raised. This is the forum for a decision. Today is the day we need to make that decision. I challenge each of you councillors to think about what it is that you want, not what it is that you don't want. What does our community want? We have a proud history of building fantastic assets for our people. We have an award-winning library. We have an award-winning stadium that, that has hosted the Rugby World Cup and will host FIFA Under 20 World Cup next year. The Four Nations Rugby League International Game was held there. We've got an amazing aquatic centre. We've got bridges galore. We've got hockey turf that is drawing, again, national and international tournaments. We have an athletics gymnastics stadium. We've got a great CBD ball, more than once we fix those slippery pavers. We support culture. We support museums around the district. We believe in our history. We believe in our future. Now we have an opportunity to complete a cultural, sporting and arts precinct that will be the envy of New Zealand. The Hunter Basa Wairau Māori Arts Centre is not a silver bullet. It will be reliant on our sculpture walk, our hearty loop, the Pulby Island William Fraser sports fields, our dog parks, the BMX tracks and our gorgeous harbour and marina. <coughs> Those are the things that will attract locals, they'll attract visitors, they'll attract international visitors to our city instead of bypassing our gorgeous city on their way to Kawakawa, the Bay of Islands, or Cape Breonna. We absolutely want people to turn right at that intersection. Come and see the amazing things that we've created for locals and for visitors. The Hundabasa Māori Art Centre ticks so many boxes for me that it is the one proposal that I will wholeheartedly support out before and I encourage you to look for an opportunity. This is the opportunity to look for the other opportunities in the other proposals that came through. This is a gift to our district. We need to accept it. Thank you.